Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. And uh, as it is said that uh, by degree I'm an engineer. But what I'm doing now today, 20 years after completing my engineering, is uh, treating patients suffering with chronic mental disorders. And this is what I do for the last two years. I'll show you the journey which I have taken through. It's 15 minutes. I would uh, rather spend time more on uh, talking about what I learned during this time than actually speaking about the boring life I had, like anybody else. Uh, so <clears throat> it, was, it was a normal story of, uh, of any, anybody like you and like me, because I also come from a small town. As a young boy, all I wanted to do was, uh, I did not know what I wanted to do. I only knew a few things that the things which are given to me are not acceptable to me. They do not make sense to me. It does not fulfill the purpose of my life because I did not know what is the purpose of my life. Right. So if, if anything daring I did, then it was just rejecting life. Life did not make sense to a 13, 14 year old boy growing up in a, in a middle class family. So I had to find something which I did not know what it is. But at the same time, I had to survive. So my father said, become an engineer. I did that. So let me summarize what I'm saying here is that if you look at this first slide, you would see that there's a common thing among three of them is everything is common. They have a junoon. Because for life, you have a junoon. Oxygen or food. The only place where an entrepreneur differs from anybody else is he does not know whether he would reach his destination or not because he doesn't know what he's looking for, what he's searching for. Can we go to the next slide, please? And I wish I knew half of what I'm speaking today 10 years back because none of this was known to me. I'm just, when I was given the job to talk to all of you, I prepared it. So switching the career does not make sense because I did not switch any career. I did not choose any career. I just continued doing what I thought I must do. And I was not attached to any of the identities like engineer, like serial entrepreneur, or traveling around the world, setting up companies. None of these were my identity. I was searching for some solution, and I found finally two years back. So what I'm saying is a very bold statement, because this is what I lived with. And at the end of the presentation, I'll show you how it is actually true. The destiny or death, none of these events in the universe are fixed. It is in your hand. They vibrate at a particular quantum level, at a quantum frequency. So if you look at any child who is born, what is the potential he has to become Manmohan Singh? Vis a vis a guy who is 40 years old to ask him if he can become prime minister. Of course, not many people want to become one more Singh now. 2G, Sonia G, all G. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but <laughs> so each moment is a choice, and the choice is in your hand. So the moment you stop making the choice, which again is a choice, you choose a destiny. Then it becomes fixed. Till the time it is vibrating, as long as you are vibrating, you are echoing, you can choose and reach the path. And same is the case with death. It is not fixed in the nature. Can we go to the next one? And in summary, what, what we are saying is that if you have to choose and switch careers, uh, it's more an inner journey where you recognize more and more, are you happy about it or not? If you're not happy about it, don't do it. That's what I did and I paid the price for it. But I was very happy paying the price for all the 95% of the mistakes I made. But the good thing I did was I made mistakes and I made decisions rather than being indecisive about life. And that's what made me learn so many things which I'm quite happy sharing with all of you today. If you look at that, just as an entrepreneur, if you want to do something in your life, if you look at this curve which is going up, this is where you need a lot of inner strength and inner energy in order to jump from one probable destiny to one unimaginable destiny which you are probably aspiring to do. So that inner strength, that inner energy has to come from somewhere. 
because everything else in the world right now without you is beautiful if you try to change anything in the world then you have to remember that you are trying to establish something at a mass level for which you need corresponding energy coming from somewhere because no one else has a problem with the world you have a problem with the world and if you are an entrepreneur and you are satisfied with the world you cannot call yourself an entrepreneur because it's a lonely ride and life doesn't have to make if if it makes sense great be happy but if it doesn't make sense then change and if you want to change then you need to have that inner strength to be able to change because otherwise the world is beautiful they are running fine yeah next slide i came out of the campus without a job although it was offered to me but i pulled the resume out of the interviewer because i didn't want to waste 50 paisa which i could actually spend on buying a smoke because i didn't want to <laughs> take a job with that company <laughs> I left Patiala, I went to Bangalore. I didn't know what I would get, actually. But I got a job in Siemens, which was the highest paying job at that time among all my colleagues. I did that two years, and after that I set up a company. That company, setting up a company was more like a teenager falling in love. They do not know what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but they have heard it was cool to be an entrepreneur, so I was cool to be an entrepreneur. I got so much kick out of kicking Siemens out because in those days it was considered a government job. Nobody was leaving it. People felt tears for me when I left job in Siemens. In 93, no one left that. So I failed once, then I set up another company. This time I succeeded, captured 70% of the market share. One and a half years later, I recognized that it is not scalable. It's not giving me a good kick. I'm not adding any value. I'm not feeling very happy. I can't get out of Karnataka. Forget about doing all India basis something. Overnight, just after two months of getting married, I sold the company. I went to Singapore. It was a nice honeymoon time for me for, to work for somebody for two years. <laughs> but you know, God has sense of humor. I thought now I'm married, I have a job, my wife has a job in Singapore, nice country. I was sacked. It's funny. I mean, I sold everything I had in India. I was promised a place in Singapore saying for two years, be there and come back as a country manager at age of 25. It was like, wow, man, good ego. And, uh, and if you're especially newly married, it's more double ego because you have a double advantage. <laughs> Six months later, I'm fired. And after that, I found another job. This is where my turning point came, actually. Me and my wife looked at our savings, because we never used to save. In, if you live outside India, you never have to save. It gets saved automatically. Yeah. I looked at the money, and I felt I'm not happy. And this money is not adding value to me. And this is where I began to think back that I need to become an entrepreneur again. I have had a very relaxing time. I was picked. Then I went, to, I went to Switzerland, then I set up a company there. 9-11 happened, companies crashed. I had an option to take out a million dollars from a bank of the company and shut it down and come back to India or go on a global tour. I landed up buying a mobile company in Switzerland. And that was another turning point of my life. And that's where I discovered that everything you today get SMS from probably DPS or you get from your banks as an alert, 12 years back, this is what I was doing here in India. And I saw the potential, what, what messaging can do. I understood that it is next to telepathy. It is, it is going to replace a certain amount of aggressive communication, which we do over the phones. But I kept doing it, doing it, and then I came to a point where I became actually, somewhere I discovered that I want to become a social entrepreneur. I wanted to bring technology closer to public. And you must have heard about Jago Grag Jago campaign, right? There's an organization, an NGO organization, and, I'm, and I was in Delhi, 2006. Uh, Core.nic.n, where you can file your complaints, consumer complaints. This was a loss-making organization, government-funded. 
I saw the potential, I signed a deal with them and in nine months time, this became the first government organization which was making revenue. First organization. And I burnt everything I had to build this organization in flat nine months. It was a property worth few crores when the, when the board member of this NGO walked up to me and they wanted me to bribe them if I wanted to run this organization. I had only one problem in bribing them. I wanted them to take money to keep shut, not to interfere, let me allow to work. They were not ready to do it. I shut the company down. I burnt crores and I had license fees coming from 200 large organizations. I shut it off. It didn't make sense to me because I didn't want to accept anything in name of entrepreneurship. If I have to make compromises, then after doing engineering, I would have gone in government job. As an electrical engineer, there's a lot of money to make by selling wires outside the market, right? <laughs> but I didn't get tired. Every time I faced a failure, trust me, it only made me believe in myself more and more. I went to Dr. Kiran Bedi and said, look, we can wire up all India police station with the public where the, where the complaints are denied to the public. They will be reached to every police station and it will take me 24 hours to get all India police station connected to the public. We did that. Now, if, if, if you guys have heard about it, it's still online, saferindia.com, which I and Kiran Bedi did that. It became a huge success. And this was the second project which I had to shut down by removing myself because I had ideological differences. I wanted this to become a self-sustainable organization while Dr. Bedi had a view of this becoming an NGO. And I believe that if you want safety and security to reach out to the masses and public, then they need to own it. They need to pay for it. They need to demand it. It cannot go in the charity form. So I pulled it out. That was my last venture to go out in the public and by then I was very tired. It's 12 years of entrepreneurship, too many initiatives, too much innovation, too much ahead of time, people don't understand it. And I discovered that I have a wife and two children <laughs> and no money. <laughs> this is where I took a little bit. For one year I did some odd jobs in Delhi. By being a turnaround CEO of a friend's company, I turned it around in four months' time. Gave me a lot of good kick that, okay, finally at least some success is coming in. But that was not something which I wanted to do. This is where I, I really want to focus actually on. This is the turning point of my life. So it's not really about switching career. I did not switch career. It's about, it's my three-year-old son, three-and-a-half-year-old son, who just began to play football in Mayur Vihar club with my daughter. And uh, coach was not happy to have three and a half year old boy because his legs are little weak and he would cry. Very soon we discovered that uh, this boy is running behind the ball for continuous one and a half hours without even having the ability to touch it. And after the match is over, he will quickly go to the ball and touch it and play with it. Coach saw this happening for a few times. He saw that this boy is non-stop, the only three and a half year old boy with one and a half years completely focused on staring the ball and running behind it, while all other boys were looking here and there and playing some jokes. Coach caught him. And he was four and a half in that one year time when we were watching him, I saw this boy playing football at home you don't give him a football, he will take anything as a football and play it. He will watch football. He will sleep at 9 o'clock in the evening, get up at 12 o'clock in the night on his own without you waking him up to watch a football match of Manchester United or Barclay Club. And you put him in the car, you take him for a match, he would sleep for half an hour. He doesn't want to waste his time. And as soon as you stop the car, he will get up because it's just match time. You don't have to wake him up. I saw the passion. And whenever he went and played matches, 
I saw people walking from the street and the coaches saw that and everyone saw that and I saw that at home as well. Everyone coming in and saying, hey, something is there about this boy. He is a good footballer. Of course, to cut the long story short, I learned from him. I learned from a five-year-old boy who is actually a footballer today how to pursue passion and how the crowd would continue to follow because I had problems with survival and family and all these things my son did not have. That is where I saw how he pursues without focusing, without worrying about his ego, without worrying about whether there's a football or not, whether worrying about whether there's a classmate or not, he would just play. That was music to me, an eye-opener because I was making some mistakes in every of my venture, thinking that I need to have this and this also, this and this also, no. If you are passionate about something, then become what Mirabai was, become what this small boy was, just continue doing it and everything else will just follow. And that was the time when I actually sat down and said, I'm not going to do anything. And I waited for the directions to come and with some divine intervention, it so happened that I was put in front of an ICU patient. I went there as a relative. For 25 days, this boy, uh, this 30-year-old old boy in Apollo Hospital in Delhi was an ICU, doctors had given up. I went there and I saw that uh, I, some, something inside me told me that he will not die. Everyone had given up. I said, no, he will not die. So that's where I began to work. And, and, and long story short, one after the other, there were two ICU cases. Both these guys are now happily living. What, what I found doing there is that if there is someone in ICU, number one, don't be hopeless. It's a war happening. Number two, do not cry. So his family members who were very close to him, we began to prepare them and coach them to give energy to the guys and not to give up. Not to give up before he gives up because he's caught in the wrong energy set. We just need to pull him out and if we are lucky, we would be able to do that. So first time when it happened, I, like, like all of you have it on your face right now, a doubt, I had much bigger doubt. I said, this is a fake thing. I mean, it's just fluke. It just happened. But then seven days later, I was given another case. We did that again for one month, and it was successful. That's why we found that if you meticulously work on energy, you do not give up much before the patient gives up. Yeah, you have a chance to make it. Right? This was, this was the time when I was doing actually nothing. It was 2010. And that's where I discovered I wanted to bring this one slide in between just to make a point here. And in, in my research academy, I day in and day out deal with this situation. A serial entrepreneur like Steve Jobs, which you respect, I respect, we all will respect. Allopathy treatment does not make any tall claim. I do not know why it is being oversold to the public that you have a little bit of a problem, just immediately go to allopathy. There are more than thousands and thousands of people who know how to cure their cancer. Even in America, there are, there are people I personally know. And for a person like Steve Jobs, it was not difficult to reach out to any alternate treatment. But he still gave up. He, he failed to be an entrepreneur when it came to dealing with his life challenges. And, and cancer, if you look at it, is nothing but a failure of intelligence. If you read that, it's a failure of intelligence of your central nervous system, which by mistake land up sending too many cells, realizing some lack in the organ of the body. And that lack is coming from some emotion. And this is where I'll take you further, the work which I've done for last two years. And these were the two questions, which actually are the foundation of the research which I do today, uh, the patient I treat. And this is what I grew up with. Why do I think the way I think? I'm not very fond of my thinking. Because if, if I'm very fond of my thinking, then I should be very happy. And if I'm not very happy today, then there is something missing in my thinking. And second thing which actually led me to be where I am is, why did it happen to me and not to you? 
there has to be a reason life is not an accident i may not know the reason it could be my journey to figure it out but it did not happen without a reason without a purpose without a cause because everything in the universe is very well organized so these were the two questions which are the foundation of the organization which i am now taking it forward which is the basis of the invention of the cure of mental disorder which we have found out the next slide please so mental disorder for uh, mental disorder by the way the good and the bad news is that uh, each one of us here sitting in this room and outside have at least one mental disorder but it is passive mental disorder by definition is actually at energy level it's like a maze you didn't know that you will get caught in between somewhere and you will not have uh, enough energy and enough power and enough strength to come out of it on your own so you get caught now if we can give him x quanta of energy it's like 911 services crane services to lift the car out when it is damaged this is exactly what we do is there enough energy with one person or 10 person or in a technology to give it to the person suffering with mental disorder to bring him out yes this is what i found that out to bring the person out of the maze reverse the path show him the right path now leave him alone there because he may still make a choice to go back there it is his choice but at least show the path to him the next slide disorder is actually a disease at energy level and disease is actually a disorder at mass level this is what i have figured it out the invention is based on these principles which i landed up integrating i was not constantly searching for it but since my teenage when i look back i realized that i was always passionate about finding a mechanism by which within the body we should be able to trigger healing mechanism and we should be able to trigger it in such a way that you are not dependent on 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 navin varshne you should be able to read that in a book practice it little bit and you should be able to get it it has to work as a technology like ipod you don't care what is inside but you buy it and it works right so 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 this these are the principles the quantum physics that everything is vibrating the chakra system which connects to your endocrine gland system then the philosophy the psychology of carl jung this work by geeta uh, deepak chopra and i use sound therapy vibration therapy to to create the resonance for the higher frequency so integration of all that brought me to a level where we can heal and cure all the patient without any medicines without pulling him out of the psychiatric drugs he is taking and just by relaxing him and raising the vibration now let me show you the basic principle on the basis of which it is done this research is based on the fact that breathing is central to our life our breathing is affected by emotions so if i just give you a shock you would stop to breathe if i if you suddenly become very happy you you forget to breathe so emotions are constantly affecting our breathing and breathing through these two nostrils has innate ability to balance the electromagnetic field of the body when the electromagnetic field is out of balance which is also known as male and female energies this becomes the bed hot bed for any disorder or any disease this is why your system is continuously changing in breathing to balance it completely if you start observing your breathing pattern you would find that most of the time you are either breathing through right or through left and if you are disturbed you will find you are stuck with one side of breathing so the breathing is affected the emotion if it comes with a very high force like like death of a family member trust is broken in a relationship which is the basic root cause of uh, obsessive compulsive disorder or when the event is considered to be bigger than life itself which means your faith in life is lesser than the event which has taken place in your life this is where that emotion gets stuck inside you disturbs your breathing continuously without your wanting to do that 
and causes the disorder across seven chakra system, causing the changes in the hormones, and then disorder comes to stay there. This is where I'm just ending it here. Uh, it's, it's two years I've been doing it. We've done more than 100 cases so far. We've taken every kind of chronic cases, from schizophrenia to OCD, to even three cases of paralysis, which were declared kind of uh, dead cases, autoimmune disorder, depression, and the accuracy level is 98% because 2% of the people didn't want to get cured. This technology, which I'm working on today, works without me 60% of the time. So 60% of your problem today can be solved if I give out this piece of tool to you without me doing anything to you. So your, your normal situations like anxiety, phobia, fear, these are very small, small things which you can take care of and this technology can become preventive to you if you apply that to mitigate any risk of disease and disorder. The whole idea is that it should come out in the form of a book tomorrow and you should be able to heal yourself at least 90% and for 10% you probably have a person who is trained in this as a healer, as a coach to help you cure mental disorder. Thank you very much. This is what I do today. <laughs>